And we're back. Welcome to the podcast with no name, co-hosted by Mike and Jay. Say hi, Jay. What is up, guys? Yeah, we don't we don't have a name yet for the podcast, branding or logoing or actually anything really. Um, primarily because I think people spend too much time on that when the content really is the king, and then the the branding and the logos and the pictures, and people spend all the time on that. But people just want the the good content, man. So we're going to have some good content. What content are we going to have, Jay? The absolute most amazing, epic content that Mike and I have ever put together. It's been four years since we've done anything, and uh, a lot has changed in our lives, but we're ready to rock and roll. Yeah, the, I've, I've been telling people I'm a year behind where I wanted to be, but I went into the wilderness of the social political world, which is a terrible place to be. But I did that as a... A living for 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 one the experience of it all, but also for the ability to show people that every basic principle you learn can be applied to any area of life. So you can go whether you're starting off in life, whether you're at a pass road in life, whether you're rebuilding your life, or whether you're reporting as I was from the White House about some of the biggest stories of the day. The fundamental principles are the same. They all work, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it just depends on what you want to do with your life. There's nothing stopping you except you. So what are the principles? I'll, I'll tell you a few of mine, and we'll be free willing. But I notice that when I'm stressed out, I always go back to, am I doing the things that I need to do? For example, when I'm stressed out, for me, it is because I haven't been doing the meditation. I haven't been doing the Wim Hof breathing. I haven't been doing the cold, the cold shower immersion therapy. I haven't been doing the cardio where you get that, there's a t- point in where you're doing cardio and you feel the, the blood pulsating in your brain. It's very, very hard to be a stressed out person if you're doing the cardio, you're lifting, you're doing the Wim Hof breathing, you're taking the, the detox supplements. You like, for example, don't you like ashwanga? How do you say that? Yeah, ashwagandha. It's an amazing cortisol suppressing supplement. You can take it at night before you go to bed just to decompress. Or you can also use it, um, you know, throughout the day. It's a, it has it has aphrodisiac qualities. There's a lot of great things that ashwagandha does. But you know, for stress relief, you should absolutely take two or three grams a night before you go to bed. Well, okay, that's a good starting off point. And let's let's talk about that because I I've tried I've tried tried it and it never because I know you loved it and it wasn't really anything that noticed uh, that I noticed. But for me, GABA and N-acetylcysteine were killers. And I'll talk about those in a minute, but talk about ashwanga and why you take it, what it does. And by the way, nobody's sponsoring this, you know, you know, because some idiot's going to listen to this and be like, oh, do you sell it? Like, no, I don't even know how to pronounce it, let alone sell it. Yeah. So, so ashwagandha is a, you know, uh, Ayurvedic adaptogen. It's um, been used for literally centuries, probably thousands of years um, for like, again, there's many, many reasons. Like if you go to examine.com, there's probably like a hundred different ergogenic uh, uses for ashwagandha but for people like us you know in the entrepreneurial space um, I would say that ashwagandha is a great cortisol suppressor I mean there's numerous studies that show that it actually does lower uh, the cortisol st- uh, stress response mechanism from a um, you know from a, a measured standpoint so most of the research and what I use is anywhere from like two to four grams and again between 30 to 45 minutes before to go to bed and it's not unusual to just pop them you know as you're going to sleep but for me um you know mike i definitely notice like a relaxation like i've always noticed a relaxation i feel there is some sort of psychosexual um stimulation too and again there's a million different things in examine you know from studies that say that it causes um improves erections and improves erectile strength there's a lot of things that it does but from just a calming standpoint like from a you know release and relieving of like stressful symptoms or even just high cortisol because you're in a stressful job is a great supplement. So how do you, how do you take it? How much do you take it? What do you notice when you take it? So for me, I take, um, I, you know, I buy like a really high grade quality off of Amazon. As Mike said, we don't make any money off of it. So there's a new, there's numerous, um, you know, good quality encapsulations that you can find on Amazon. Um, I usually take three to four grams, you know, depending on how much I have. And that's normally three or four capsules. I just swallow them with water. Um, it should be taken on an empty stomach to cross the blood brain barrier uh, more effectively. But I think if you ate, you know, 30 minutes or so before, I don't think it's going to have that big of an effect. 
So you, you said how, how often do you take it? Do you cycle off of it? What, what, what would be the regimen if we were typing this out? Somebody's listening right now and they're taking notes. Yeah, it's a good question. You really don't have to cycle off of it, but I mean, I know Mike and I both agree that you know, for, with everything, or the human body is incredibly, incredibly dynamic and also homo- homeostatic. So you probably should. But for me, like I don't take it every night. If I have a really long, stressful day, um, or I've just been not sleeping well, I will take it. And again, I'll take it probably anywhere from fifteen to thirty minutes before I go to bed, and anywhere from two to four capsules, which is like two to four grams, because the capsule version I take is a uh, thousand milligrams. That's great. I'm glad you liked it. And uh, that's the thing people have to learn too, that they, they find frustrating is because every, every time you talk about something, the conversation can be frustrated in any number of ways. So people say, well, I didn't, I tried it, didn't like it. So not everything. I, I tried it and it didn't work for me. And I, I don't freak out about it or yell at people. I just didn't use it for me. The, the two key supplements I always take, and I, I take a bunch and I don't sell either of these either is I take N-acetylocysteine and I take GABA. I cycle off GABA though because I've read that that's the best way to approach it. And with uh, N-acetylocysteine, it works primarily as it aids your body in detoxing and reducing inflammation. And by the way, detoxing has a bad connotation because a lot of woo-woo people will say, (laughs) only do water for a week to detox. So therefore... You have a bunch of idiots who therefore say there is no such thing as detoxing, but that's actually uh, not true. There, there's a whole detox system that your liver is involved in, and you you do, you do need glutathione because that is a nutrient that your liver uses in the pathway one and pathway two detox cycle. So that's where I use the the NLC cysteine for. But what I noticed is that this was probably like ten years ago. I would feel like anxiety. Um, hard, it's hard to explain people who had panic attacks know what it means where you just feel like your body is a little shaky and I started taking NAC which is short for N-acetylocysteine and for something completely different I, I started taking it because I read it was good for something else good for your skin and I just noticed I was like way more like mellow relaxed and calm and I thought what what's going on here turns out there's been all kinds of scientific research on PubMed about bipolar, schizophrenia, depression, anxiety, and how N-acetylocysteine helps that out. And that's because they're learning that a lot of these medical conditions are, they're actually conditions of inflammation. And most people, well, you know, this, the, I call them, the, there, there's a term that, that I use, I call them the Reddit atheists, because <laughs> they, they know everything. And if you Google them, they, they just look like a mess, right? I always tell people, uh, Google Reddit meetup, and that'll sort of tell you everything. It'll tell you everything that you need to know. Google image search Reddit meetup or Reddit atheist. And those are the kind of people who they, they're screaming and everything because they're unhappy. And I noticed, though, there's a ton of science about it. And if you ask most doctors, and this has been true, true proven, they don't know what causes depression. It could be serotonin. They talk about dopamine. There's, they don't actually know. And there's one hypothesis which holds that Uh, these diseases are actually disease of inflammation. Now it isn't fully proven or whatever, but that's why people are noticing uh, great results from N-acetylocysteine. I've had all, I wrote about it, I don't know, four or five years ago, and I've had thousands of people told me that it completely changed their life and it's 10 bucks. I take the Gero brand. Um, That is for me, the number one lifestyle. If I could only take one supplement, that the only thing that I would take would be uh, NAC. What about you? If you could only take one supplement, um, that's a great question. It's hard for me to like quantify supplements versus medications. Um, NAC is an amazing supplement for so many other things. I mean, so many of the things you talked about. You know, inflammation is really what leads to um, degradation of cells, and then degradation is what leads to the disease process. So, I mean, essentially, every disease. In the human body comes from inflammation, from being in an inflamed state. And as you know, Mike already said, you get inflammation from a lot of different ways and a lot of different means. Um, but I think if it was one supplement, that's a great one. Um, but for me, probably because I'm obviously fully optimized and been on you know testosterone optimization for close to 18 years now, it would be magnesium um, because magnesium is used in so many different cellular processes. And when you're on testosterone. Um, you, you're kind of upregulated already, again, therapeutic testosterone. 
Um, so magnesium is a very, very crucial mineral slash supplement to take to maintain all the cellular processes that, that are necessary when someone is on testosterone. But even if you're not on testosterone or you're not hormonally optimized, it's also incredibly, incredibly crucial supplement for a lot of different things in the human body. Um, you know, just musculoskeletal and joint issues. I mean, you know, without magnesium and proper magnesium um, in your body, you're going to have a lot of issues. The great point, actually, last night, I took a Epsom salt bath. Um, that's one of the best. It's apparently old wives' tale, but it actually is one of them that's truest. I took a warm 20-minute Epsom salt bath because your body absorbs magnesium transdermally. I, I read about magnesium. I, I hate the title of the book, and I think the title of the book holds it back, but it's called The Magnesium Miracle. Fantastic book to read, but it sounds like one of those books you write for the crystals crowd. The, the, the people aren't going to take it seriously. Magnesium's involved in over 400 processes. The pe people talk about fluoridizing our water. If you actually add mag added magnesium to the water, you would reduce, this is not a joke, this is not a made-up number, you would reduce up to 50,000 heart attacks a year because most people think you need calcium. Calcium is actually bad for most men unless it's regulated with a certain amount of magnesium. There has to be a balance. So everybody says drink your milk, eat your cottage cheese. For the calcium, this is actually wrong. Magnesium, especially high doses of magnesium, absolutely crucial. So I'm glad you brought that up because I take a chelated magnesium. There's a certain um, Japanese process where they add an amino acid to it so it binds better. Otherwise, it's very hard to properly absorb. And then I take it transdermally vis-a-vis -vis an Epsom salt bath. Yep, and that's actually a great point. As you know, um, our our um, amazing uh, ART and cranial sacral therapist, uh, Kathy Martinez, um, who's not available if you live in Southern California, by the way. She's only for select private clientele like me and Mike, but no, she just she's maxed out. But she uses... Uh, magnesium oil uh, whenever she performs massage and cranial sacral on her clients um, because it is it's amazing as Mike said you know you can get it obviously through an Epsom bath too but just the magnesium oil rubbed into the soft tissues and then massaged is absolutely amazing especially for people who are magnesium deficient which as you know Mike was kind of intimating is most people I mean most people do not get enough magnesium you definitely don't get it today cooking with like you know pots and pans like we once did 30 or 40 years ago um, it's very important and essential trace mineral. And, and as Mike said, it's totally, most people are deficient in it. I will mention a couple of different supplements um, in addition to what Mike said. The chelated is great. Um, glyconate is probably the best for people that are hormonally optimized. And I would say between 400 and 800 milligrams is what you would start at. And then the other one, and this is one that most people do not understand, and this is like an awesome one that I was told probably about six years ago by a guy who's like a highly uh, evolved ketogenic dieter and, and understanding of the process. But magnesium citrate, is amazing form of magnesium to improve and increase bowel movements. So if you're a low carb dieter or a ketogenic dieter and you do not get enough carbohydrate or roughage in your diet, um, you definitely need to take magnesium citrate because it will improve bowel movements. It's a, it's a powerful uh, laxative in, in, the, uh, in the biological systems. Yeah, magnesium. Everybody, man, woman, and child needs magnesium. And by the way, that's why it's an artificial thing if you could only take one, right? It's actually kind of, it's actually one of those annoying questions. I think people, what if you can only do one exercise? I get that if philosophically you're trying to have a reductionist sort of argument. Well, I would only do the overhead press because structurally it hits everything. Or I would only do overhead squats. Or I would only do the power. It's just kind of a dumb, you know, a dumb thing to talk about. And this is the same way with supplements. If I were, because for me, supp supplementation takes on two forms. One is things that people take that are bogus like testosterone boosters bogus <laughs> right there's one testosterone booster and it's with the doctor under doctor supervision testosterone replacement therapy and then there are supplements though that are health enhancing so i take uh, every day n-acetylocysteine i don't take gaba every day i only take that when like i'll take two grams of that when i really want to nap and if you read about some of the side effects, labored breathing, tingling skin, those are actually normal side effects. I do get them. But when I sleep, I'm like cashed out. And when I wake up, I feel like I was a bear, just got out of a hibernation. I feel completely revitalized and great. I also take a COQ10. Absolutely. 
and uh, fish oil. Those I don't take a multivitamin actually. Uh, there's been a lot of it's been shown. You don't know th- the multivitamin that's ideal. You, you don't even know. But some people do like the Super Nutrition Optipack. When I did take a multivitamin, I did use that one. Th- those though are key is fish oil, COQ, especially if you're a man over a certain age, over 35, over 40. COQ10 is for your heart. It's an actual nutrient that the heart needs. Supplements uh, like magnesium, I, I take that separately. I take a chelated magnesium. I forget which brand, but the key is that there are all these different types of magnesium. And if it isn't a magnesium chelate, then it's not going to be absorbed properly. Yeah, it's well said, Mike. I would add just a couple other things. Um, what Mike's saying is totally true. And I didn't say omega-3 slash fish oil because I want you or I I hope as a person who's really conscious about their nutrition and their health um, that you're getting it from your diet. It's kind of hard. You definitely have to eat, um, you know, oily seafood or, you know, fish at various phases, you know, through a seven day week. But if you don't, you should definitely get a very, very high concentrated uh, deep sea uh, omega-3, which again is fish oil. You can even get krill oil, but some sort of really good omega-3 essential fatty acid um, you know, there's many people out there talking about how, how many you should have in dosages and grams, but depending on your body weight, definitely somewhere between two and four grams a day. There's no question about it. And then I would also add, and not everyone can take this, but melatonin is critically important, especially in today's culture where most of us are sleep deprived and screwed up, uh, due to blue light sensitivity because of we're on screens all day. You know, people are having all kinds of damage from blue light, um, from being on screens and melatonin is a critical supplement that you can take before bed at night that can improve uh, polyphasic sleep. Um, So I would definitely recommend that you start off on a lower dosage because, you know, melatonin is a very, very powerful supplement and it can cause you to be groggy in the next morning. So, you know, my recommendation is if you're not a regular consistent melatonin user to start with three milligrams at night and work your way up to as high as you can go. I know people that are like very high level researchers who claim that they use between 100 and 150 milligrams of melatonin at night. Now, obviously do not start out at that level because who knows where it'll take you, but it really is key to, like I said, improving polyphasic sleep, which all of us need, especially in this day and age where we're blasted by blue light. A lot of people, myself included, buy those blue blocker sunglasses. And that this I'm glad you mentioned that because I haven't been as disciplined about that as usual is you should have an app on your phone that that changes the blue light settings as you go. But if you're going to be reading your iPhone before bed, you absolutely they're called the blue blockers. When I was a kid, it was actually for like marketed to really old people on TV. Uh, they're hideous glasses, but they block out a lot of those blue UV ray lights and then you'll have much better sleep. Yeah, melatonin's good. Ironically enough, Gorilla Mind uh, makes a sleep aid that has melatonin in it. And me though, I just, I've never, a lot of people have trouble sleeping. Me, I've just always been, I've just always been like knocked out. It's been one of my, I don't know if I'd call it a gift because I like to sleep maybe a little bit too much, but I don't usually need much of a sleep aid. But when I do, yeah, melatonin is killer. Uh, GABA, valerian root, there's all kinds of various things that can help us sleep. But the blue blockers are clutch. The blue blockers are clutch. Yeah, it's funny that you just mentioned that, Mike, because I just came from A4M in Las Vegas these past couple of days and was walking around at the convention. And it's, you know, it's uh, Klatz and Goldman, the two owners and founders of A4M. And it's really like a three ring circus, but it's awesome because it brings out all of the highest ended technology in the quote unquote in performance improvement, health and fitness arena. And um, I actually. <laughs> I actually walked by Dave Asprey's booth and Dave Asprey was one of the featured um, speakers or one of the keynote speakers on one of the days there. And Dave and I know each other and we go, we go way back now um, with our jousts on um, Twitter and a couple other spots and stuff like that. But you know, of all um, people, he has an awesome product now um, for blue blockers that Mike was just talking about. And it's kind of funny, but the gal that was working the desk there um, knew who I was and my wife and I were walking through there and she gave my wife um, a free pair of his like nicest, highest level come. I think they're called True Dark. And so that was awesome. And, and uh, I didn't know about it because I had already walked by the booth, but um, my wife, Monica, gave them back to me you know, later. And I actually wore them, Mike, last night and they're pretty awesome. Yeah, they're called True Dark. They're amazing. Okay, yeah, we'll check those out or throw in a link or something. I'd never heard of them. I just used the... 
eight dollar or whatever on Amazon, just the original blue blockers. And it was funny though because I remember the commercials on TV when I was a kid, the late night commercials. Get your blue blockers. There was even like a song or something very weird. That that optimizes it. Another thing, you know, maybe we'll just call this, uh, you know, products and things that are essential. Another thing I use, no, no, no. So Nadab, if you're listening, cut that 30 seconds back. We should do a podcast just on sleep, but we'll do that one after this one. This one will still be the, the, the supplements we use that are like the best. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, in terms of other supplements, I'll occasionally do a pre-workout, although I don't, you know, as I've gotten older in life, I don't really enjoy that jacked feeling of, oh my God, I'm on like a pre-workout. You'll see the, I think that's for the younger bros. And no no hate for the younger bros, but you'll see the videos where they're on pre-workout. They're all cracked out. I'm, I'm at my point in life, I've, I'm more interested in being just mellow and calm and sort of grounded than I am in that. I do take, um, I have taken in the past, people have asked me if I've done medifinal. I'm not recommending medifinal because... As a prescription to talk to your doctor about. I'm not advocating any prescription things. These are conversations to absolutely have with your doctor. I've had medicinal. There's nothing like that, that's for sure. Yeah, there's there's no question. Well, Mike and I will talk about nootropics on another podcast without a doubt. Um, yeah, and then, you know, I have to mention it because Mike, I mean, Mike said is, is correct is, um, you know, I am a big, huge proponent in metformin. It is a prescription medication. You do need to find a physician if you're in North America. However, it can be found um, at various you know, online pharmacies and in a lot of different countries. And I'm sure we're going to have a lot of people listening in different countries. You could probably walk up and buy it over the counter. You definitely can in Mexico. Um, so it's an amazing supplement. And again, it's a medication, but it's a supplement because it suppresses insulin. Um, you know, It's the number one prescribed diabetic medication in the history of the world, but it's been used and studied um, by more, um, it's actually the number one studied medication in the history of the world. It's been, it goes back 78 years. There's a study right now going on called the TAME trial. And it's uh, used, it's actually, they're studying metformin for its use in age management slash anti-aging. And um, I have a mole kind of inside the trial right now. And I've already get, been given some of the information on it. it, it bottom line is guys, metformin is an amazing, amazing wonder medication in that it reduces inflammation all over the body. It suppresses insulin signal. So again, for someone who's normal and otherwise healthy person aging, um, metformin is just an amazing, amazing, amazing medication. It, and people always ask me, Mike, like how old should someone be to start metformin? And, you know, if I was going to you know, interview 25 of the top age management doctors in the world, they would all tell you as soon as you can afford it. Yeah, metformin, that's another that's a doctor prescribed type two diabetic medication that a lot of people are using. You've used it, what, five years or so? No, I've used it a lot longer. I think I've been on it. Um, I mean, on and off, I probably have used it for probably since I started uh, testosterone optimization, but consistently. Yeah. I've been on it. I want to say going back since Brett. Yeah. So for five years, you got it right on the number. And what do you notice if anything about that? Um, I mean, it's completely changed my body composition. And what I mean by that is, is, you know, I'm older now, I'm almost 48, I'll be 48 in February. And I maintain single digit body fat, you know, year round. Um, and my diet is pretty relaxed. I mean, I, you know, I do fast, you know, as Mike does, and I follow, you know, my lifestyle diet, which is the blowtorch diet. Um, but it's just completely changed my ability to handle carbohydrates, meaning my carbohydrate carbohydrate metabolism is enhanced um it suppresses insulin your insulin signal altogether so if you're also someone who's combining it with fasting um it's just amazing and then you know it works there's a lot of things how the mechanism of action of metformin is we're finding out more and more by the day now but you know initially it was thought that it uh, inhibited glucose formation in the liver so that when one you know got on it for say six eight months consecutively there was like a net cumulative or almost a build-up effect in the muscles so that if you didn't take it for three or four days let's say you were traveling and you missed your dose you would still have the effect of it blocking um, glucose production and obviously formation and, and digestion not digestion but just utilization in the liver and now they know it's also doing this which is kind of you know breaking but it's cleansing the microbiota, so the gut microbiome is being cleansed by metformin in many ways. Okay, so let's do, we'll wrap it up, we'll sum it up. Um, top, I don't know, supplements that that you take every day, that I take every day, I would say 
and acetylcysteine. Uh, GABA, even though I don't take it every day. Magnesium is a must-have. COQ10 is another must-have. Fish oil is, again, I just I don't even consider that a supplement. It's just a nutrient that should be in food and unfortunately isn't because of our processed food supply and, and whatnot. And then if I'm going to have like a really intense day, I'll take a an over-the-counter nootropic or something like that. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing that you missed. Uh, I take all those things. Same as you, I will use a very low dose of mod- modafinil. I do have a prescription for it. Um, you know, and that's a quarter guys. I'm not taking 200 milligrams or anything like that. I take a quarter and that's again, if I need to be incredibly focused or I'm doing something that's like, you know, mass massively, um, intense from our, um, you know, con- focus standpoint. Um, I'm trying to think there was one other thing I was thinking. Oh, the one thing that we didn't mention was uh, bone up by Jaro formula and bone up has a specific form of calcium. It's hydropoxite. Um, that's really good for aging people for uh, bone mineral density. It's, it's, it's also got vitamin K and a couple other cofactors that you don't really get. But, you know, Mike pretty much hit the nail on the head. All those things that he said are critically essential. Just make sure if you are taking fish oil that it's deep marine uh, fish oil and it's a quality supplement. You know, it's not some crap that you buy at like Save-Ons or uh, CVS. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening to currently the podcast with no name. If you have a name suggestion, Put it in the comments below. Let us know. And of course, if you do want to talk about things that are not political, um, and by the way, by not political, I mean also two people try to backdoor and say, well, global warming isn't political. No, nothing, nothing political. If you're going to see it on CNN talked about, I don't want to talk about it here. I don't want any of that nonsense here. Thanks for listening. This is Mike and Jay. Take care, guys. Uh